welcome to Phantom Art Box. My name is Deborah, and this is another vlog. Now I realize I haven't been around as much lately. I was actually very hesitant to, uh, to create this video um, because not all of it is going to be positive. So I'll start off with the positive first. Um, first off, I want to say thank you. Uh, my Etsy shop reached 2000 sales at the beginning of August, and it's all thanks to you guys for showing support. Um, so I did have a sale going on that was 20% off and I had a giveaway running. So today the winner will be announced. Uh, but if you are going to my shop currently, it is closed. <laughs> it's closed for the month. I'm not sure if it'll be closed indefinitely. I haven't decided yet, but, um, I need to take a break. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the negatives. So when I started this project, if you watched the first YouTube video that I ever did for this, it was an experiment for me to figure out um, marketing myself as a artist. And the experiment was basically for me to keep in practice with marketing, learning what you're asking of influencers, actually talking in front of a camera and um, being able to public speak correctly, and it was to improve skills that I felt that I was weak at. Um, and that's how it started. But the Etsy shop was only meant to stay open for about a month. And because it did so well, I'm like, you know what, I'm actually enjoying this. So we ended up, I ended up leaving it open for quite some time. Now, cut to this month, when I reached the 2000 sales, when I had created uh, the sale and the giveaway. Um, I did have to shut down the shop and that is simply because the listing here, the Spirited Away Ghibli Jar listing, which is one of the top sellers in my shop, um, was taken. <laughs> and when I say taken, Timu stole my listing and they started to resell it on their platform. Or rather, the, the, uh, the resellers that are on Timu started to resell it on Timu. Um, they took it from Etsy and, you know. So, with that being said, I know Etsy has been letting resellers into their platform. I know other people's artwork has been stolen. Unfortunately, mine is fan art. And with fan art, it's kind of a gray area because you are doing your twist and your version and your style and drawing it in, drawing it by paying homage to that particular movie. So, when you report on Timu that they took your art for that, Timu has this whole legality form about IP law and this and that, and they want you to fill out this form. And the form is basically kind of like a way for them to find a loophole to take your artwork. Um, now, my concern was not that they took the fan art. Fine, you want to take my fan art, whatever. Like, it makes me mad, but at the same time, I'm more concerned that if I left the shop open, they would take the top listing of my original work, right? And that is my stuff as well. So the more I leave my shop open, the more I worry that they'll take more from me and I felt like they took enough. So I did shut down the shop for now and I'm still deciding what to do. Now, if you want to help <laughs> with this particular issue because it's not just me that's affected by it. Um, when I went to Timu to report it and I spoke to the customer service agent, which really did sound like an AI bot from ChatGPT, but when I talked to this customer service representative to take this down, um, they were not very helpful. Um, and when I researched further into it, I found many, many artists on Google who had their stuff stolen on YouTube, who had their stuff stolen. A lot of it original work. Some people got their actual face stolen and they were endorsing a product. They're an influencer. They were endorsing a product and someone took a screenshot of their face and the product replicated the product and put their face on that product. So yeah, I have, <laughs> I have mixed feelings regarding what's happening right now. And this is the darker side to marketing, the resellers, the drop shippers. And if you don't know what that is, resellers are basically people who resell. Um, they look at <clears throat> other people's stuff, they see if they can take it, and then they reproduce it at a cheaper, and then they sell it at a cheaper cost. But the stuff that they're selling, their quality is much lower 
because it's not the original. Um, and that's how they make their profit. Dropshippers is a different thing. I'm not going to explain that. You can check that out on YouTube. But because this has been happening on Etsy, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with the platform, create a website, do something else. Don't know if I want to continue the project. So this whole month is for me to kind of figure out what I'm going to do. But if you want to help out, there is a way to report it. You go under product details. So I'll leave a, a screenshot there of how to do it. Um, there's a little button that says report. Um, you can go under other for the selection, and then you can just say that this artwork is owned by Phantom Artbox. It's stolen. Please take the listing down. Now, <clears throat> to date, I only know of three listings that had my artwork. So the three listings got taken down because of, funny enough, my customer's support because they had all reported it stolen by, um, from me. So those three got taken down. But I know from experience, because I am a marketer as well, that for every three you take down, five pop back up. Especially because they know, like, over time, the artist is going to get tired. They're not going to fight this, you know. And to have to copyright all of your original work, I can tell you it can cost a lot of money to do that. And no artist that I know of does that. So they wouldn't dream of this happening to them. And I know that some people have told me, you know, you should feel flattered. They stole your artwork. That means they think your artwork is good enough, whatever. It's more of the fact that it's a violation. It feels like you've been violated. Like you drew something, you worked hard on it and someone just swooped in, took it, stole it, and then did whatever with it and made a profit off of your work rather than, you know, doing the work themselves. And that's kind of how the whole year has been, where it's been a lot of art theft, a lot of theft in general. Um, it seems to be the theme of the, the year in terms of create, creatives and the creative portion of it. Now, with this whole Timu thing, again, if you do want to help, if you see my work on Timu, please report it um, using the screenshots here, uh, where you report under product detail and you just say that it's uh, it's artwork that Phantom Art Box created, it's stolen. And hopefully if you, enough people do this, it'll be taken down and they'll stop doing it. But I have no faith that they're gonna stop. Um, they And it's not just me who's had this happen to them. There are plenty of videos on YouTube of artists that this has happened to. Um, and again, as I said, there was one girl that I saw where her face was taken and she was an influencer. So. That's one thing that I wanted to talk about that was a negative part of marketing and creating a shop and being an artist. The other negative thing that I want to talk about is, I don't know if you can say it's negative, I mean it's sort of a gray area too, um, I want to talk about AI. Now again, that was another topic I'm hesitant to talk about because I'm not technically against it, but I'm not for it either. Um, I'm for it if it's used responsibly. I'm against it when it's being used <clears throat> to take from other artists, to take from other creatives. Unfortunately, when this tech came out, Silicon Valley decided, we don't have to ask, everything's online, you know, and we can just basically take from that pool and teach our AI without having to get, you know, um, get the copyright rights from any of these people. So. <clears throat> this is the darker side to AI they don't want you to know about. There's a lot of lawsuits going on with a lot of different companies. They will never tell you that. They will sell it as though it's the, the newest thing, the best thing. It's so easy to use. You want this. You want this. And they brainwash you so much. Like, I bet right before this video, there's an ad about, we implemented this AI. You should use it. It's easy to use. So keep in mind, all these companies have bought share into this new tech. They are making money. The more you use it, because it's easy and accessible, the more you use it, they're making money off of that. If this does well, they make millions. So <clears throat> I'm not okay with that side of it. I'm not okay with the fact that it it's scraped from other artists. Um, I'm not okay with the fact that people think because it's easy, they're creating something. They're not really creating something. You're basically typing in a word like you do in Google and taking pixels from other people's artwork. 
and it doesn't create, it just generates this thing that's new, but it's a combination of other people's artwork that you've put together. So <clears throat> I don't really agree with that portion of it. I agree with if you want to use that as reference to draw something and put the work in and teach yourself how to draw. I feel like AI is kind of for people that are just, they're lazy. They just want a quick fix to something that they can't do. They can't draw. I want a quick fix. I don't want to learn how to draw. And so what's happening is that in the entertainment industry, when they ask for an AI prompter, they also ask for you to know how to draw, how to tweak this AI. And I think in the future, that's what we're going to see more of that. Like, they want you to know how to use the tech, but at the same time, they still want you to know how to do the skills to actually change the tech. So <laughs> currently the AI, if you put in a prompt, somebody gives you an assignment, you put in a prompt, it comes up with whatever it comes up with. Then they say, can you tweak the hand? Because AI is terrible with hands. Tweak the hand, draw it, you know, doing this or doing that or holding an apple or whatever. That person who prompted cannot do that physically because they don't have the know-how of how to paint that. So if you're going to learn the tech, which is fine, you should also know the logistics that go behind it. Um, you should also know how to do it yourself because if you're not doing it yourself and you're calling yourself an artist, I'm sorry. Um, you didn't put the time, you didn't put the effort. So, and you're taking from other people. So. There are people that are not going to agree with me on this, and that's fine. I'm entitled to my opinion. But <clears throat> with AI right now, there are lawsuits going on with specific artists, some of them I've met, and um, they're going after the big companies. And it might be an uphill battle, but I'm glad they're doing it because I feel like these laws that they're doing is going to create guardrails for AI in the future. Um, guardrails where they don't steal from people. So right now with Microsoft chat GPT, I think the New York Times is suing them. <clears throat> Adobe did something really dumb. Um, I think they, they were not transparent about where their AI was pulling from. And so a lot of people wanted to leave <clears throat> Adobe in mass. And when they all try to unsubscribe from Adobe, they find out that they have a hundred dollar ding. So the United States government is now suing Adobe for shady business practices. And while that was going on, in comes Canva and Affinity and they put their stuff on sale <laughs> and they're like, here you go. You're not using Adobe anymore. Use this instead. Right. But they also use AI. I don't really know where they pull from. So I'm not going to not going to speak to that. And then you have um, Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion. Those are the two that are being sued by the artists. I think there's another one too, but I can't remember. And they're being sued because in the artwork, you can see that there's the artist's signature that it pulled pixels from. So a lot of that is going on. It's, it can be confusing. Um, in terms of explaining how it actually like the logistics behind AI and how it works. Um, I'll, I'll attempt to explain it, but it, it, the way I understand it, but again, it's very, it can be confusing. So the way I understand it is that, um, numbers were assigned to say letters in the beginning. And if you were to type in, I want a book written like, I don't know, Jane Austen, I want to write a book like Jane Austen. There should be a main character or whatever you prompt that into say chat GPT. It'll write a story for you based on that. It's pulling, using the numbers and it assigns it to the alphabet and it's pulling the letters from the internet and it's scanning the metadata of anything that says the keywords, Jane, Austin, Pride and Prejudice, or whatever that you've put in the prompt. It's scanning the internet for that and it sort of puts it together in this thing. And that's how I understand it. And someone was like, you know, they took the numbers and assigned them to letters. So why can't we take the numbers and assign them to pixels and have it learn that? And then it just takes the pixels from and, and searches the keywords of the metadata of say, if it's my artwork, if you typed in Fantomu art box style drawing and Ghibli, 
it would pull everything that has those keywords because when you put stuff on the internet, everything has metadata, everything has a keyword. And <clears throat> it'll take pixels from it, put it into the system, spit something back out. So the concern is that like for creatives, yes, they're fighting it. They are fighting it. And th that will dictate how it's going to be used going forward. So I'm not totally like, you know, this is doom and gloom. I think over time there will be rules put in place that'll be able, you'll be able to use AI responsibly. Um, it might make things a bit easier for other artists, other creatives to generate something and then tweak that particular art. Um, but I just don't want it to steal from other artists or other creatives. So I want everyone to be aware of that, of what's happening in that, in my industry, in other industries. And I can tell you now that if you are thinking to yourself, this is not going to affect me, it's just affecting creatives. That's a lie. Because over time, this particular algorithm can be applied to many different things. They can apply to these, these numbers to create code. They can, you can write programs with AI. So if you think your job is safe because, you know, it's not going to affect me, this is not our fight, it's everyone's fight. Rules need to be put in place so that, you know, as humanity progresses with this new tech, it's being used responsibly. It's being used with specific guardrails in place. And these lawsuits are going to dictate those guardrails. Rails. And now I've gone on a tangent, but that is basically how I feel about it. Um, and so far, I've just kind of used it. I try to use it in a responsible way as reference or something like that, but I don't really, because I have to know the tech, obviously I'm in the industry, but there are certain things that I won't do because I think that it's laziness and it's one of those things where people don't, people may not necessarily want to learn that, that particular skill set. They just want to say that they're that and not do anything to earn it. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel this year. It's been a tough year in terms of uh, seeing all that stuff happen. It hasn't really affected me personally, other than this whole Timu thing, which has nothing to do with AI. That's more reseller and dropshipping and a different issue. But all of these issues combined is very discouraging for the creative sector. It's taking a hit, you know, and um, as a community, obviously, before I said that we used to gatekeep. Unfortunately, what's happening now is that artists are going back into their shell. They're no longer wanting to share, you know? So for instance, Meta, Meta promoted AI and they basically said, too bad, we're, our AI is just gonna take your photo, like your face, we're gonna take your artwork, we're gonna do this. And it's now, you know, our AI is gonna learn from that and you have no say. Now, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a mass exodus of people from um, Instagram and Facebook and anything meta related, um, and they moved to the app Kara. Now, Kara is an app that was created specifically for artists to share their work with each other. Um, it, it's basically an alternative to Instagram and what Instagram and meta has done in terms of not letting you opt out of having the AI take and learn from you. Um, and I spoke with one of the people that is part of that particular project, um, and they use AI to combat AI, funny enough, because I had asked the question. Um, and I personally have enjoyed it because there's no suggested ads and there's no other thing, but um, it does need support from the creative community in terms of funding. Um, because if you're not doing paid ads and you're not doing, um, any of that, you're not getting any revenue from anywhere. So it's being paid for by another person. Um, I think her name is Jinha, Jinya, Jinya, I think that's her name, but she had a copyright infringement lawsuit that she won and she is, uh, one of the founders of Kara and, uh, she is partially funding it and along with other people. But uh, obviously as the server grew exponentially um, after Meta's announcement, because it did grow like in the millions overnight because of what happened. Because prior to that, yeah, the app was there, but it wasn't 
widely known until Meta Instagram did what they did, and then artists were like, we need another platform, and they all moved to Kara at once. It overloaded the servers. Um, so if you're on Kara and you're an artist, please make the coffee donation or the little donation just to be on there because it is a good community. It is a good place to be. Um, you know, so yeah, like I want, we want to show support for that. So like, I don't want artwork to be gatekept the way that it was before. Um, but with the way things are going, a lot of artists are ending up going back into their shell. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video. Um, I did have a free rinse sticker that I had created and I do want to say that um, I'm still continuing consignment with the Corner Cafe, so I don't think I told you guys, but I do have a small shop at a cafe in Markham across the street from uh, Markville Mall. The cafe is called the Corner Cafe, uh, owner's a friend of mine. So if you do want to buy any of my stuff that was on Etsy and you're in Toronto or Markham specifically, you can go there and get it. Uh, maybe not all of it, but it has a small portion of my stuff physically being sold there. And that'll probably stay, I'm not sure how long, maybe until Christmas, maybe into the new year. But um, again, like that's where you can get my stuff for now. And at the end of September, I'll decide whether or not I'm gonna keep the Etsy shop open, I'm gonna open, maybe open another website, or maybe just stop the project altogether. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for their support. Um, I've learned a lot from this whole experience, I really have, both negative and positive. Um, and yeah, I that's all I really have to say. So if you're watching this, thank you for continuing to watch my rant. Leave comments in the section below. Tell me what you think about everything that's happening with the art industry. And if you're a budding artist, don't be too discouraged. Um, think of AI like a tool, just like the computer, just like anything else. It's meant to be used. It's only as bad as the person that's using it and what they're using it for. So I'll talk to you guys later. And hopefully in the next video, I'll have more uh, content on whatever it is I'm doing at the time, because I think uh, I'm waiting for some polymer clay to come in to kind of work on that and doing a little bit more of internal creative projects that I'll probably show on my Instagram and maybe on my YouTube. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll probably have some tutorials on sewing, like how to sew a scrunchie, and I'll probably do another drawing tutorial and maybe some design tutorials, we'll see. But going forward right now, um, I'm taking a little break for the month and I will see you guys later. Bye, thanks for listening and watching. Mm -hmm.